got two top caliber players here. Fantastic match that we're going to see either which way. Wonderful way to kick off the first round of the Charlotte Pokemon 2018 Regional Championships here at Battlefield. Yeah, that's right. Kyle Sablehouse had gone first. We're currently in his third turn here. He had gone first, and like you said, both players had hit the Bridget. Kyle's turn was Bridget, set up two Zora, set up two Routes. Tristan responded with set up uh, Tapu Bulu. He gets two Grubbins. But the problem here is that we see that on his second turn, Tristan has missed the Vika Volt. So his second turn was just Horn Attack for 60 damage. It's definitely not the most ideal like start. He does have a choice ban, so he gets the Vika Volt out of that part of work. Um, and that gets a little bit more important than you, know, you might think. Right, so Kyle's going to go ahead and immediately start taking out these Grubbin. He recognizes Tristan does not have Vika Volt, and if he can start knocking out Grubbins, Tristan might just stall out entirely. And we also see some really great plays as well, though, by Kyle. And besides that boost mark, we also see a double puzzle of time already come down. Take out that parallel city that Kyle actually used on his first turn. Tristan immediately had a field goal response, but Kyle said, Hey, look, I've got these two top of the on my bench. We'll go one here. Love what I can use to set me up for next turn. I kind of want more bench space to get these swords going for the rest of the game. So he got to use his parallel city again and wipe them off the board. Opening them up and perfecting the setup for the next two turns. Right, yeah, Tristan's main out in this matchup is try to take one shots, and uh, Tapu Bulu with the choice band caps at 210. So getting rid of those two prize uh, weaker guys on the bench is certainly uh, important, but let's, let's take a look at Tristan's hand there because that's terrible. nothing <laughs> It looks like it's four, three grass and a lightning. It's really rough because it's kind of the downfall of a deck like this. You're playing 12 energies as opposed to decks like Zorak Gardevoir's playing eight or some of the Zorak decks that are playing four or six that are maximum. So you have a lot more chance of just kind of opening up all those energies together. But it's even more so worse to be able to build it. lets you attach energies only if they're still in your deck. Right. So if you have them all in your hand, it's going to slow down your strategy. You're going to get clumped up and you're just going to be put in a situation like this, but you're just hoping to attack immediately. And that's not going to accomplish anything. Yeah, Kyle Sablehouse playing the Zorark. Any deck that plays Zorark is going to come out kind of aggressive. If you get a couple Zorarks down, or even just one, you can start really applying a lot of pressure because you just end up seeing more cards than your opponent. And Kyle is really in a position now to absolutely capitalize on this super slow start from Tristan. He's going to continuously ride his beating. It's only doing 80 right now because he played that Parallel City against himself. If he finds his one of choice band that he plays, it is taking two shots on all of these Tapu Bulus. So he's going to continue to keep the speed up, keep the pressure up, and try to close this game up before Tristan can actually get anything going. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with that completely. Having these doubles in right, we're going to see a second one probably come into play here. You know, it's just going to really put himself in advantage because Tristan, besides the fact that he doesn't play Zorak at all, he doesn't play Artillery, he only plays a single copy of a rank board and two top abilities. Um, and unfortunately, he was forced, unfortunately for Tristan, that he was forced to open with one of his top abilities and use the second on his first turn as well. So by the end of his first turn, he was out of top of the for the rest of the game unless you see some sort of shenanigans where they get placed back in the deck with Super Rod, something along the line. But otherwise, he's just going to be drawing only a couple cards for the rest of the game at a time. Yeah, so we're going to take a look here now at Kyle's turn as he continues to try to, to capitalize on this slow start. He has Ultra Ball for a Zorark GX. He's holding that in his hand is now playing Mallow and putting two cards on top. And it looked like one of those was a Guzma. I was not able to catch the second card, so we will have to see what he trades into. He's actually going to trade the Zorark into uh, Evo Soda. Uh, Evo Soda, interesting. He's going to go get the, another Zorark. So he's thinning the Zoroarks out of his deck. He doesn't have any more Zoroas down on the board. He's parallel city himself, so he can't bench any more Zoroas. So he's going to thin one card out of the deck here, get that Zorark in the discard and a second one onto the board, and now he's got access to two trades every turn. And a Guzma in his hand after this yep. play. I think he really recognizes here, and I mean, this is where you see some better Ooze and everything coming into play. Kyle Sablehaus is no stranger to this game. He's playing for over 12 years now at this point. You know, so these kind of scenarios, they become familiar to him after some time. Tristan finding another Grubbin, which it's kind of useful because Kyle did put that Guzma. He knew Tristan was basically in a situation where he doesn't have many resources. So right. while Kyle can sure he can go ahead and try to put pressure in terms of the prize card game, if he can just keep these Grubbins off the board, Tristan will not have any way of being able to make a comeback in this game if he can't hit Miko. Right, yeah, that, that Grubbin top deck is technically keeps Tristan in the game for another turn, but it's certainly not a supporter card or any or anything else that can really get him out of this tricky situation. It might be in his best interest to try to go to a better game too, where he's got a more of a decent setup going on. 
because, uh, I mean, Horn Attack for 60 every turn is certainly not what this deck is built to do. No, not at all. And I mean, something like Tristan's deck, that early Vika Bolt coming out, start thinning your deck with these energies, you're going to have a really hard time in this mid-game because you only see a copy of like eight draw supporters here. You see four Professor Sycamore, two copies of N, and two copies of Cynthia. That's all that we're seeing from him. He does have two copies of Skyla, but again, that's not really going to do a whole lot here. This is a situation where Tristan says, I want more cards in hand. I need to be able to get resources. Yeah, and so now we see here Kyle ditching that Guzma card. He's decided now that there are two Grubbins on board, it's better to just try to draw another Pokemon and knock out this active Tapu Bulu, take two prizes. He'll go down to three prizes there. Tristan hasn't actually cracked that prize window yet. He's still sitting at the six. So uh, definitely I see a good play there, discarding that Guzma. He doesn't need it anymore. No, he doesn't, but at the same time, he doesn't get this Pokemon. It's going to be kind of awkward <laughs> here. He's, I believe he's only used the one trade so far, so he's still got a little bit of time to be able to see if he can find that basic. Yeah. And of course, Cynthia, fresh six. a fresh six card. Uh, if he does not draw a Pokemon here, I believe he's still got a second trade, so he actually is going to be seeing mm -hmm. eight cards in total. If he doesn't, worst case scenario, if he really wants this knockout, he can retreat that Zoroark GX. He can go into Gardevoir GX. Infinite Force does 30 damage for every energy attached to both active Pokemon. That double colorless counts twice because it's two energies. So that's four energy in total. 120 damage gets that knockout and removes the only Tapu Bulu on the board, leaving just a Lele with two energies. Absolutely. So really nice way to set himself up with that, that Cynthia because, like you said, if he does, if he does miss it, wow. eh, I've got backup. But <laughs> he hit more than what he needs. More here. than enough. Yeah, that uh, Galade now, he can use that Premonition ability, rearrange the top five cards of his deck, and like we said before we played that Cynthia, he's got a second trade. He's going to trade one of those cards in his hand for the two perfect cards out of that top five. I don't even know what he needs anymore at this point. He's not even going to go for the trade. He likes the cards in his hand. Yeah, so he's just going to take that knockout. He's going to start the lead and everything here, taking those first few prizes. I mean, he's already got one earlier from the first Grubbin, taking two more. So if he can take a knockout on this top of Lele here in the following turn, He's really just going to need a couple, a Guzma to right. end the game because he can either knock out the Grubbin or because he's got that Gallade on the bench, Gallade can just take out a Vika Bolt even in one shot. So he's going to, Tristan's going to have a way to take that final prize no matter what. Yeah, so Tristan's top deck here might be just a turn or two too late. He does find a Cynthia that is a supporter card that will refresh his hand. He will be able to shuffle all those energies in, draw a fresh six, but... He's attached his energy for the turn already, so Energy Drive is going to be doing only 100 damage. It's not going to be enough to knock out this Zoroark. So even if he draws the best the best hand ever, right? A Tapu Bulu, a Rare Candy, and a Vikavolt, and he, he still can't get the Nature's Judgment off this turn. He's already he attached his energy. But if he does find a Choice Band here, he actually have exactly enough to take a knockout with this Tapu Lele, oh, and he does hit it right card. off the top. So this does give him a situation where... I'm still thinking, you know, we're on the too little, too late scenario, but he gets a top of Bulu. He doesn't get the Vika Volt here, but at the very least, he's able to advance the game progressive by mm -hmm. taking his two prizes. So he's going to have a way to take a knockout in the following turn, and that Gardevoir has 60 damage on it. So it's in a range that Tapu Bulu can actually take a knockout on it with its second attack without even needing a choice ban on the following turn. So he's hanging by a thin line, but there's an option. Yeah, so there we go. We see that energy drive for the knockout. Uh, something that certainly doesn't feel great is even though that Gardevoir is weak, it already has enough energies to get a clean knockout, a clean one shot on this Lele. Infinite Force does 180 already. So Kyle can really look to set up the Pokemon on his bench for the final knockout. He's only got three prizes remaining. He's going to get two here. All he needs is a Guzma, and he knocks out Grubbin. As we see that, he's going to go ahead and play a Lele, which is one of his outs to Guzma later on, and he's going to go ahead and get Mallow. Search his deck for two cards and put them on top. He's going to bring two energies up. I, I definitely like this here because, I mean, you're putting yourself in a position where your opponent has to look at that and say, well, I know that he's going to take this knockout here. I know he's going to be at one prize. Tristan is forced to play an end next turn. He knows, even though Kyle actually didn't put the Guzma on top, he grabbed some other cards instead, Tristan has no way of knowing that. He's in a position where he's, oh, wow, wow. that was big. I didn't even see the max potion in his either. hand. That makes the Mallow play totally make sense. He can yeah. refresh those energies. Now that Gardevoir is not in threat of being knocked out, and I, that's pretty much a checkmate scenario. Yeah. 
I don't see it. the only way literally that Tristan to be able to come out of this. He's got to be able to have a Goose one next turn and knock out a Zorak with Tabu Bulu. And you have to hope Kyle doesn't have the final knockout just to end the game at the same time. It, it, it's right. going to be way too much that he's going to need to happen. I'm thinking that we're probably going to go to a game two pretty quickly. Yep. But, you know, with only it, it only going to take maybe five minutes to get to that scenario. So I definitely think Tristan's going to play out the last couple turns. It looks like Tristan has the cards in his hand to get a Vikavolt in play. He's got a rare candy, and I think that Vikavolt is in his hand, but he's not going to be able to do enough damage here to clear that Gardevoir off. And he does actually have the Guzma, too. So <laughs> if he had actually promoted the Chorbit, the, the Grubbin, or anything else, he could have taken a knockout on that Zorark if he wanted to. Right. Um, still, no, I don't think he has a way to do it now because of the fact that he promoted that top of the But going to go ahead and concede yeah. the game here, and he's going to go to game two. Uh, I think this is smart. It leaves him enough time. Uh, Tapu Bulu, sometimes, th th this is a kind of a long matchup. There's not a lot of one-shots that happen. They have to soften each other up, which means we have a lot of turns that have to be played, and these games can potentially go really long, and Tristan now has to win two games in a row, and at 30, 31 and a half minutes left, this is a comfortable enough of a cushion to where you can play two games at a reasonable pace and still close out this series without having to get a round one tie, because a round one tie feels really bad for these players. Yeah, it's not what you want to go with. I mean, obviously, a tie is still better than a loss, but at the end of the day, you want to, somebody wants to advance with a big out victory at the end of this round. It's just the last thing that you want to kind of start with, just sitting there, oh, I got one point in the first <laughs> round. But like you said, comfortable time limit. You don't have to see these players go at an incredibly fast pace. I can tell you we're going to probably see Kyle Sablehouse be really relaxed this game. Mm -hmm. He's going to take it slow, make sure everything goes the way he wants. I think he knows that he's in the position to be a favorite in the matchup in general. So he's comfortable just doing what he needs to do to pick, take this win at his pace. And at worst case scenario, they have that game three if he needs to get to it in his mind. Yep. Yeah, this uh, here at um, Charlotte Regionals, we've had, I can't remember the exact number of players, but I think we crested just about 1,000 Masters, which means just a, yep. we... Uh, you're going to have to see a 7-2 and two record if you want to make it to the second day right. of, of Swiss. And 7-2, and two, you'll note there's, there's no ties in that record. Seven wins and two losses. The only way you can make it into day two with a tie is if you go 6-0-3 and three to get to 21 match points. Right. So if you get that tie here in the first round, you cannot lose a single match for the rest of the day. Unless you go 7-1-1, one, and one, right. which you have to win out at that point. And at that point, the tie was almost equivalent to the loss in, you know, exactly. in terms of what you need to do to get to the 7-2 uh, exactly. record. Uh, but both players, you know, are feeling pretty, probably pretty confident going into this round. You know, we see them setting everything up. Tristan, Tristan, hopefully going to go over to that prize camp <laughs> so we, we can go. see what we got. <laughs> yeah, and I see. I saw Kyle's start. He had two routes in his hand. Uh, I think there's an Ultra Ball in there, so he's probably okay. So he can get that bridge in when he needs it. Another Lele start from Tristan, and I wow. don't see anything but Sycamore and a bunch oh. of energy recovery in that hand. And yeah, he's got, I think, a Super Rot and an Energy Recycler and three Energies. Oh, wow. That's just... Not you know, good. At the very best, Tristan hopefully can see this hand and says, well, at least I'll get this out of the way round one and I won't have to do it again. <laughs> All right, we draw these cards. We see that our Ranguru here, uh, he draws some Ultra Balls, so he can go and get a Grubbin and set him up for the Vika Volt the next turn. He does have the Vika Volt in hand. He would have to find the Rare Candy, I believe. I don't see that in That's his hand right now. What art he's using, because that last card is either another Ultra Ball. Yeah, it is. His it's Ultra Ball. Okay. Yep. So he would have to rely on in Oranguru's Instruct to try and draw some more cards here, because the rest of that hand, not very good. Tristan just not drawing the best cards, and that's something that you can see this Tapu Bulu deck do sometimes. It will just not draw correct cards. So he's going to just attach his energy to the active. At least he's going first here. He's going to pass the turn. Kyle's going to draw. He's going to Ultra Ball. That's going to be Tapu Lele. And we're going to most likely see a Bridget come out. He's going to get some Zoroas down. He's got an Evo Soda. So he can go and get his Zorark GX and start drawing some cards. Yeah, and the fact that he has to get rid of that second Ultra Ball hurts a little bit. But like you said, he's got that Evo Soda and everything yep. in his hand. So realistically, I mean, this hand is almost as good as you can get <laughs> when it comes to just this opening this matchup. Having that double Ralph has got to feel great because you know that even if Tristan's able to pull out the knockout on this following turn, which honestly, he has to find the Rare Candy Vico Pool to really be able to realistically do it. Yep. You've got another Ralph for sure already next turn. You're going to be able to get two, probably three Zoroas. Yeah, you can get you can get two Pokemon or three if you want to leave that bench spot open. I see three Zoroas being a very fine play, and that's exactly what Kyle is going to go with here. 
Uh, like I said before, this Zoroark Gardevoir deck is a Zoroark deck first, Gardevoir deck second. And you want is even though it's easier for Tapu Bulu to knock out a Zoroark GX, Trade is such a good ability at providing yep. card advantage that as many outs as you can get to that, the better. And you know that they're going to be targeting them down as well. Any chance mm -hmm. that Tristan gets to get a Goosebutt Choice Band Tapu Bulu knockout on that Zoroark, he's going to take it. So by having as many as possible, you really limit your opponent being able to just remove your draw engine and keep yourself consistent. When you're using as many as two or three trade abilities from your second or third turn on, you really are not going to have a problem throughout the game in getting the cards that you need. Right. Tristan's top deck here is a nest ball. He has some options. The Vikavolt is in his hand and another Professor Sycamore. So he's in a tough spot where if he plays that Sycamore, another Vikavolt goes down. But he does have an option to play the Ultra Ball in his hand, discard all the other cards. He can go get a Tapu Bulu, instruct for two, and hope to rip a Supporter and a Rare Candy. That might be what he needs to do because if he just kind of stalls out, he's not going to promote the game to a situation where he's going to be able to close it out in time. Yeah. I really wasn't sure what he was going to do there. I didn't know if he was going to go for that Oranguru play. It'd be risky. <laughs> I wouldn't even. I wouldn't have minded actually seeing if he has that second Lele in his deck. Seeing an Ultra Ball, maybe for like a top Lele or something. Go for that Instruct for one. See if he can actually pull it off. But otherwise, you could always just Skyla for the uh, the Skyla for the Rare Candy right after. Yep. So. There were definitely a couple different ways that he could try to pull it off there. Um, I see Rare Candy, but did he hit an Ultra Ball yet? I don't. I did not see Ultra Ball. I just saw Rare Candies and more Grubbins. Yeah, I he, believe he had a sleep issue there, so he's just going to quickly reach in his bag and try right. to just change one out. Yeah, so the, the Nest Ball he's going to go grab. Before the Sycamore, he grabs a second Grubbin. This is to protect him from only having one Grubbin on board, and Kyle having Guzma, DCE, Zoroark, knock out your only Grubbin, and then you just stall out just like we saw in the first game. So uh, he's going to protect himself from that. Unfortunately for Tristan, he happens to, to draw his other two Grubbins right after the Sycamore. So he's yep. more than enough Grubbins. He needs to find Bulu, Rare Candy, and Vikavolt if he wants to get this kind of, to get this deck off the ground because we haven't seen it do right. really anything yet this round. At the very least, you're going to want to see that Rare Candy Vikavolt because otherwise it's going to be very difficult to be able to get going. I mean, Rare Candy Vikavolt will at least ensure the knockout on that Ralts this turn. So it'll be pretty... He's got it. Oh, he's got the Rare Candy Vikavolt. There's no Tapu Bulu in that hand, but there is Rare Candy Vikavolt. You're right. Strong charge. If you attach both to the active, Energy Drive would do 60 and take a knockout on a Ralts and put Kyle down to just one Ralts, which, if you're Tristan, you, you kind of feel good if that's the case. Right. So going forward here, though, I mean, I think Kyle, he's, he's only got two cards in hand, which is going to be interesting. One of them we know is Eva Soda, so he's going to get that Zorark out. And this is the only thing that gets a little awkward with Zorark in the beginning. Oh, sorry, he has three cards in hand, so it's a little bit more comfortable. But when you're trading, you are discarding a card, mm -hmm. so you're going to be very, you got to be very careful with what you choose to discard because you don't have a lot of options. So you get in this situation where you kind of need to build up your hand size again with something like a Cynthia or any any card that gives you a refresh. And from there, that's when the, tr the train really starts going right. with all those trade abilities. Yeah, it looks like one of those three cards is a Cynthia in his hand right now. Oh, and just like we were calling it, Tristan Strong charges both energies to the active. That does 60 damage. He's going to knock out one of those two routes and he's gonna take a prize, which is something he didn't do in the first game. So this is definitely a better start for him and everything overall. The Evo Soda is going to come down, Zorark into the active position. There is a supporter in Kyle's hand. I saw a Mallow as well. So if he wants to, he can Mallow to put stuff on top and then draw into them. And uh, it looks like that's what he's doing. He's setting two cards aside. I, I don't know where the Mallow is though. It is in his hand, I just don't know if he hasn't played it yet, but he's communicated to Tristan that, hey, I'm playing Mallow, these are the two cards that I want. And there it is, okay. So he's gonna put, I think it was another Zorark and double colorless. So you can trade with the second Mallow in his hand and he's gonna get those two cards and it's exactly what they are. Zorark, double colorless. And he's gonna start setting up this two shot on the Tapu Lele. I like this because this guarantees the Zorark for the next turn. You guarantee the energy. Like the Mallow just really puts you in a conservative position. You didn't need to explode. You didn't need to get things rare candy guard aboard. Like you didn't need any of that this turn. Mm -hmm. So being able to guarantee this damage on the on the Lele while ensuring that next turn, even if Tristan manages to pull off Tapu Bulu, Choice Man, Strong Charge, and Return to Knockout on the Zorark, he's still going to have at least one more on the bench ready to go. Yep. So he's still going to be in an overall good spot, and Kyle's still going to be able to have some steam to be able to kind of run through these next couple turns. Now let's be fair, Tristan, it doesn't become that difficult to pull off turns like that once the Vikavolt no. is online. All you really need 
He just needs the Tapu Bulu and Energy and a Choice Band. Those are that's only three cards, and he could very, very possibly draw into those with this Ultra I Ball. Don't think he has physically any way of doing it besides Lele for Sycamore here because he has a Skyline hand that could grab him the Choice Band, but he wouldn't have a way to get the Energy, I don't think. And as he's looking through here, there is no Tapu Lele in that deck. There, is... there was. There was. That was actually one of the first couple cards there. Oh, is that right? So he, he has that option, but. This is that weird scenario where you just gotta decide, like, well, I've got the Skyline. I mean, if he goes for a Sycamore, he's dumping two Booze Buzz, which is just not an option that you wanna do. I don't know if he has a Cynthia, is what I'm not aware of. I don't think he has. Yeah, he's just gonna grab Tapu Bulu here, and uh, probably we'll see Strong Charge to it. Um, I don't even know if he can thin his hand low enough to where Instruct is going to be particularly useful. Yeah, he can't grab a single card. Like, the only thing you can do to. Yeah, no, none of these situations just seem good. He has to. Skyloft or a heavy ball to get a second people pull out and draw one with a regular. Yeah. You can't pull off the combination by doing that, but it at least gets you a new card. Like this is the weird scenario where you've got those two Guzmas in hand, you've only got four shuffle draws in your deck, two and two Cynthia. You really don't want to play a sick board dumping those in there. No, certainly not. He's gonna go ahead and play the Skyla card here. The options are, like you were saying, going for the other piece for rare candy Vickavolt. Uh, he's already played, has he played his Heavy Ball? Because a Heavy Ball would be the second piece to the Rare Candy Vehicle Bolt, and that would... He's eyeing it right there. Alright, there it is, yep. It would allow him to pull off Nature's Judgment for 180, um, yeah. and it, maybe maybe that card off the top, the one card he draws is Choice Band from Instruct. That would be incredible. That would be the best card for him to draw, and then uh, yeah, he gets the knockout on the Zoroark and leaves Kyle with just one trade on board. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe he's got to go for that play. I, I think the best thing you know, is is that one. It does leave him with just those double Guzmas in hand, but I, I'm I'm not a giant fan of this Skyla for Cynthia play. But let's see how it, you know it's it's an interesting play. We'll see how it works out for him. You know, it, it, it was he could have grabbed the top of Lele instead of that Mulu and played the Cynthia this turn, but this is a more conservative route. He just wanted to get energy on board. He didn't care about taking the knockout. He's fine letting Kyle go up, you know, in the prize leads here with the Zorak knockout next turn. But, you know, we're gonna see how this kind of plays out and works out for Tristan in the next few turns. Yeah, and attacking with the Lele here, which now he's considering not doing, so this gets even more interesting. Okay, I see where this is going. He's going to promote, he's going to horn attack. That's going to be 30 damage. That leaves Zorak with 180. Now that gives him two options. The first is, now he doesn't need Choice Band. Nature's Judgment gets that knockout. But more critically, if he does find that Choice Band, his GX attack, Tapu Wilderness GX, knocks out that Zorak and will clear this right as beating damage off. So we just have to see if Kyle can put together a big Gardevoir this turn and try and knock out that Bulu because it doesn't look likely. No, not the most. I mean, he plays only one Choice Band. So he, he's literally, I think he would need, he needs very double colorless energy and his one choice band and obviously the rare candy card. <laughs> That's a lot of cards. Off of one trade in the Cynthia. Yep. Uh, it, it's a lot that he's going to really need. Um, is it possible? Yeah. But it's definitely not the most likely scenario to go through, especially needing that one singular copy of choice band. Right. So he's going to go ahead here, shuffle draw six. Before playing the Cynthia, he did get the second, Zo another Zorark on board. So... He does have one more trade available to him. That hand does not get him to that Rare Candy Gardevoir turn. That's a, not actually a great set of cards. I mean, he can get rid of at least one of them with Prey. Right. And I, I can't tell if that's an Ultra Ball or a Rare Candy on the left side of his hand, but either which way, it's at least one of the pieces towards it. So yep. if these last two cards are something that can really put him forward, then, you know, we might be in an okay spot. He's going to go ahead and trade the N. He draws Ultra Ball and a Double Colorless Energy. The double color synergy is nice so that we don't have to miss the attachment or anything there. Yep. It looks like that end card is actually a puzzle of time. Mm -hmm. So the best thing that he could do here with that Ultra Ball is grab another Zorak if he wants. Um, but I do like this here. This does, again, force that Choice Band out from the top of uh, Hulu yep. or a Guzma, one option or the other. Um, I, I think knowing, looking at Tristan's hand, we're pretty confident that we can see this knockout here just because of the fact that we know he's got those Guzmas. But he's oh, just going to have to do Choice like, Band off the top, Mike. He got the Choice Band off the top. This if opens up done more the options. Heavy ball play, right? Would have actually <laughs> that's that's, that's that crazy. All right, so now Tristan's options blow wide open. He can use the strong charge with the choice band. He does 210 damage. If he wants to, he can still do the Guzma play and take that other Zorark and use the Tapu Wilderness attack, clearing all that damage off and forcing Kyle to again have a Gardevoir in play. Otherwise, he doesn't knock out that Blue, and that Blue will still have Choice Band and can take another knockout. Now, we know that Kyle does have two Field Blowers in his hand, so he would be able to remove two Choice Bands off the board if that were the path that Tristan takes. 
Oh, he wants this Ralts. That makes that makes some sense to me. Um, I don't like knocking it out with the top. You know, I would have rather knock it out with the top playlist. But you know, again, let's see how this play cell works out for Tristan. He decides to go with a little bit of route. He's going with the top of wilderness to, to you know fully heal this yep. uh, the, the top of blue in that scenario. He understands by making that play. Tristan made a very clear signal to Kyle. He says, "I understand." This matchup, I know that the Gardevoir is my primary threat. I can deal with this deck if it's nothing but a bunch of Zorg. So, mm -hmm. by healing myself completely, you have no way of removing this Top of Bulu threat next turn. You don't have a Ralts down. There's just nothing you can do. So, this Top of Bulu is going to guarantee take at least another, get to get another swing next turn onto the board state. Tristan did not put down the choice band that he's holding in his hand, so he's definitely still got, you know, a pretty good setup for the next following turn. Exactly. He protects himself from the field blower play, as you see Kyle actually trade one away. Keeping that choice band in his hand means, I've got 210 damage whenever I want it. And the only way you're going to stop that is if you can play an N. And Kyle can Ultra Ball, he does also just have the Lele in hand, so he could play N this turn, but he doesn't know that Tristan's holding the choice band. That's the thing, you know, when we're seating on this side, we we'll obviously have a little bit of bias for knowing exactly <laughs> kind of what exactly is in their hands and not, but otherwise it's very difficult to be able to kind of read through those scenarios and figure out what those best courses of actions are in terms of, you know, trying to figure out what kind of resources your opponent's sitting on and everything. Tristan's doing a very good job at keeping that a secret from Kyle because mm -hmm. he hasn't played a whole lot of cards in the last few turns. So naturally, it gives you the impression that there's not a whole lot going on in Tristan's hand, but really we know it's more just the fact that he's been working with the resources that he's got. Yep. And he's got some, like, really useful utility cards in there. That Guzma and the Choice Band, you know, and even having the Cynthia for the refresh, Having a rare candy in case he gets a Vika Bolt, his hand is definitely open with possibilities. Right, yep. The only card that he might want to start seeing at some point is an energy recycler. He's going to start running thin on energies if he goes with the Nature's Judgment attack. And uh, on Kyle's turn here, he's going to Ultra Ball, gets another Ralts down, also identifying the same thing that Tristan is, that Gardevoir is kind of the key to Kyle's path to victory here. And getting another Ralts down puts Tristan in a weird spot because if he plays another Guzma and knocks it out, he can't use Tapu Wilderness GX, so that damage is going to stick. And he goes to three prizes, which is a much more awkward number than four. So he's going to attack this Choice Band and just absolutely disregard that Ralts at this point. And again, I, I, to, to go back to the energy recycle comment you made a moment ago, something we have to remember is Tristan's first turn of the game. He played a Sycamore discarding both one of his energy recyclers out of two and his Super Rod. Right. So, and two energies. Yeah. Was that, so that was a hand. already low on resources in there, and he's only got one energy recycler. But Tristan is going to have to pinpoint this game perfectly, but lo and, and behold, there it is. speaking of it, <laughs> energy recycler in the hand. Uh, would he's gonna go right to the discard pile. He's gonna count his energies one two three I five. think I see five saw you three grass double lightning. That's exactly what you energy recycler for almost every time is three grass two lightning So that's perfect from Tristan's side. He's gonna get this knockout He's gonna go down to two prizes and Kyle hasn't actually taken a knockout yet So Tristan's looking to be in a good position this game and if he can close it out in a good bit of time here uh, We could see game three very well also swing his way and he could take this match after a very tragic game one and the fact that he found this energy recycler here, it's just, it's, it's really massive. He gets the blue, he gets the energy recycler. He puts himself in a position where really all he ever would need to find is a choice band if Zork yep. is the attacker that's coming up. Or uh, he's already got, and he's got the Guzma already in his hand. You know, double sick more and it gets to the left. Um, so there's quite a bit of different ways that Tristan can make sure that he closes this game out. Um, something I want to point out is he is playing the energy recycler, which put five energy back in the deck. But just for the sake of time, he's immediately taking two of those energies out of the deck with Vika Bolt's ability and putting them onto the top of Bulu, so that way he doesn't have to go back into the deck and waste out more time when there's less than 15 minutes of this round as it is. Right, Tristan really recognizing that he is on the clock here. Even if he's in the driver's seat this game, he's on the clock this, for the whole match, and he needs to try to play as quickly as possible. His, his line of play to victory for this second game is fairly linear. He can play rather quick. And we see Kyle, he's going to go with Wonder Tag. That's got to be an end as he pulls it straight to the front. He's going to set Tristan down to two cards because he only has two cards left, or two prizes left, rather. And uh, Aranguru is only so much end insurance, so right. Tristan is going to have to... Uh, actually, he doesn't really need to draw anything, depending on... Oh, uh, now he needs a choice band with that max potion. He's going to need a choice band because I believe we see the field blower is at Kyle's hand. Yeah, he does have that, so we're going to see... Both of these choice bands coming off the board. Yep. Tristan is going to go down those two cards and everything, but it's also not going to put Kyle in the best scenario. Like He does have the DC already for the knockout, which is good, but right. he's only got one Zorak can play. He doesn't have the second one yet, so he's only got one trade. Yep. This end's only going to draw him eight theoretical cards. He's, 
Tristan's just got to get this Gardevoir into play, because if not, that Rolch is going to be sitting ducks at any moment. Yeah, and Tristan's out here off of this end of two. There's still a lot of them. Any of his choice bands, uh, at least he has two left, one or two left. I can't remember exactly the number. Ultra I, Ball, Guzma, I, Ultra Lele. Ball, or Guzma, and right there, I think we saw that he drew his other Lele. Yeah, I believe actually I did see the other Lele. So, so it's going to be, if, assuming he has one of his three Guzmas in his deck, and I'm fairly certain that there should be exactly one left, um, he, that should be the way to, to Even if there thing. isn't, he could also just go get Skyla for choice band and take the knockout yep. on the active as well. He has many options. Assuming that was Lele, I couldn't see because he kind of drew it fast. Yep, it is. It is. It's definitely yep. a Lele. All right, so he's so. holding the game in his hand. Kyle doing what he can to shore up his board position, assuming Tristan does not have game in hand. Doing a good job with that. Trading away the Enhanced Hammer. There's no special energies in Tristan's deck. That is useless to Kyle. Benches another routes, which is... And these are good plays. Parallel City getting rid of his two Lele's. This is a good board for Kyle to be looking at. It's, just, it's just too late. He's, yeah, he's too far behind. Tristan's got the Lele in his hand here. Really, Kyle's only out to not losing next turn <laughs> is not taking this knockout. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we literally would have to not take the knockout. All right, so Tristan can just promote the Lele for a little bit of insurance. Yep. That way uh, his outs are either Guzma or Skyla. Both are fine. Top text Bridget, that doesn't matter. Just plays the Layla. He needs to play quick. He needs yeah, to play quick. He's, he's taking his time on this decision, which to me signals like Tristan knows his deck in and out. So this signals to me that he's not comfortable in this matchup. He actually wants to take the time it looks like here because he's worried about closing out game three, I think. Otherwise, that Layla would hit the board unless he's completely, you know, forgetting about the cards of his deck or knows that he doesn't have either Skyla or Guzma in the deck. I right. don't know what his prizes are right now. Um, for off the top of my head, so I, I can't really say if one of those last two cards is going to be the Gooseberry. You know what he can do? He can use the strong charge to check his deck. And that's, that's something what he can I do was right now. For, but <laughs> and the there's Skyla's a Skyla. in there. Just looking for there's a Guzma, so that's that's an out. There's a choice man. That all of the pieces are in his deck. He just needs to go He's through the motions and get there. Right. Yeah, only two prizes left. He's gone through a Zoroark, a Ralts, and, and two Ralts. Yeah, so he's only got two prizes left. I. Have, I don't know if he's what he's missing here. He's taking his time though, and this might really pay, he, he might have to take a tie. This this makes me think that again. I can't tell if he just is really uncomfortable with this match and wants to make sure that he has less time in game three, or he's just that unsure. He don't. I don't All right. Okay, so we're gonna see how this line of thought works out for him. Um, he's not going to use the top of Lele. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay, Energy Drive is going to be 100 damage onto the Zorark. Now, all is said and done, Tristan is not lost. This does not lose him the game. Kyle has four prizes left, and that is now a weak Zorark. If it stays active, then it's another strong charge, and he can knock it out. So he doesn't lose make, making this mistake, but uh, certainly an interesting one. I wouldn't even be surprised knowing Tristan and just the mindset that he's in and being such a skilled player and being able to look at every factor, yeah. I would not actually even be surprised if he's doing this on purpose, knowing that what are the chances after not doing anything on the following turn that Kyle is going to play in the end? He's still got the game locked up next turn. Actually, by the way he's doing this, like technically the only thing Kyle could do to actually steal the game away from being a guaranteed victory is heal the Zorark, Guzma the Tapu Bulu, knock it out with Gardevoir. Like, that's literally everything that you have to do to yep. stop Kyle, uh, stop Tristan from still having the win next turn. Right. Now, if it's the fact that, Tr that Tristan didn't see the path to victory, then that's a different story, and we're going to have to see if he's going to be able to find it on the following turn. Yep. Kyle's but, finding some good cards. He's got Rare Candy Gardevoir. He puzzled for... The max oh, this is a really good turn. He's going to max potion that Zorark. He's going to retreat into this Gardevoir and start building it up. He gets this knockout on the Lele, goes down to two prizes, and threatens game on the following turn, actually. And there's Infinite Force, takes that knockout, goes down to the two prizes. Tristan, this is going to tell us a lot here. Who Tristan right. decides to put in the active position is going to tell us a lot about his mindset and what he's thinking about. Well, he actually time. doesn't have game in hand anymore, because now he needs the Choice Band and Guzman. He can't get both of those with one Lele. Yep. Ah, uh, that's a second energy recycler. Oh, he must not have discarded it. It must have just been a super rod early. Yeah, it must yeah. have been a super rod and something else and, that I know this is a different It card, was certainly so. still a super rod and some energies, which yeah. was, was difficult. But uh, now Tristan finds himself in a position where he might not be able to close the second game out, yeah. unfortunately. I, I'd actually almost say that, like, based on the way that these last turns have gone, unless, unless Tristan draws a something crazy off the top of his deck with this Oranguru, I don't... 
I actually am pretty favored towards Kyle right, right. now. I think it's literally going to come down to what the one card on top of his deck is with the Ranger. Right? Yeah, and uh, energy is not one of the cards he wants to see. Playing this energy recycler and putting those energies in the deck... It's going to make it harder. It makes it harder to hit Choice Bend. But yeah. it's a it's a it's a necessity because he's only he's only he had three cards in his hand anyways he had to go below three right. to be able to use a Ranguru's ability that draws him to three cards in the first place so yep. this is that moment where he's really got to just hope like this top card is going to make him break it and if anything he could lele for the Guzma to right. like thin for one more card no that's, that's not it that's, an that's not the card he wants. I think I'm pretty sure we're going to see. I, I can't. Yeah, Kyle's got a goose in his hand. He's got a double colorless energy. Unless we see a Lele for an N, which he could do. Tristan, you know, that is a line of play. Tristan can also, re with this strong charge, he can retreat the Oranguru, go into the Bulu and Nature's Judgment to remove the energies off the board, make it harder for Infinite Force to reach for that two prize knockout. But it's certainly not ideal. Which, at that point, if Kyle has a Mallow, he'll just grab... Oh, okay, well, here we go. This is going to be the end play. This is where we're going to be able to see a couple things change out. Yep. Um, I want to see where these energies are going to. I actually wouldn't even mind seeing them go on the Oranguru. Oranguru, and that's where they attack. are. Yep. But I will agree I do like the idea of Hulu getting rid of all the energy. Um... I just check, double check and make sure there's oh, no supporter. I get it. He, no, he didn't have the matchup because the Parallel City, it was reducing the damage by 20. He was off the game last oh, turn by the 20 damage from the you're Parallel right. City. So that's why he didn't go for the Guzma play or the Skyla to be able to get the Choice Ban. You're right. That Parallel City making that map just perfect. So at the top of Bulu, Parallel City reduces the damage when it's flipped towards the direction that it is. For Tristan, Grass, Water, and Fire Pokemon all do 20 less damage. So it would have done a maximum of 190 damage to that Zorark. So right. that's why Kyle was making sure he kept his Zorark healed and he kept himself in that game position. So wow. Tristan recognized that, made sure that he didn't fall into that trap. And he's put himself in... It's all up to what Kyle's gotten off his double trades, his ends. We see a candy... Um, I think that might be a Guzma It looked like hand. a supporter card. I'm not sure which one it was. But yeah, that's a that's a good catch there. We were both missing that at first. But that Parallel City yeah. really putting in work for Kyle here. Not only does it remove those easy Lele knockouts, but yeah, reducing that 20 damage. That's, something you really forget about. You play Parallel Guzma, City for the blue side. That red side reducing 20 damage, a lot of times you forget about that. And we see now, certainly as Guzma and Kyle's hand. He just hand. needs a double colorless energy actually off the second trade because he's got a float stone. So he can put the float stone on the Zor, take use the Guzma. If he's able to draw literally just a double colorless or an, uh, a second puzzle because he has one of the puzzles in his hand. He's got a choice band in his hand as well. So just a fairy energy yeah. oh, also works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, or maybe not. Maybe so. that was a puzzle, puzzle I saw. Cynthia, Floatstone, Guzma. So second float, second puzzle time will take him the game. Uh, the double colorless energy will give him the game. There's a couple of different outs that'll give it to him. He right trades the to Cynthia. He draws Zorua and oh, I don't think there's any card combinations that could actually win this at this point. No. And again, now we got to look at what Tristan's next turn is going to be. That uh, Gardevoir in the active position is within range of getting knocked out by Nature's Judgment. Kyle cannot just use this Gardevoir to knock out that Oranguru, or he's nope. conceding the game to Tristan. So he's going to have to figure out how to maneuver this and try to draw a double colorless and maybe get a knockout with the Zoroark. He'd have to field blower his own stadium, though, to do that. Yeah, this is definitely going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting turn to see how it's going to end up working out. I think you almost... Plays the end. We're gonna go to two cards each. I'm I'm really excited to see how close this game has come down. I thought that this was going to be very one-sided, but it ends up coming down to the wire. We do only have four minutes left in the match. If Kyle is able to actually prolong this, he could just kind of win off of his game one win. We'll have to see if that ends up happening, as his two cards are not great, not even playable, and he's just going to retreat with that float stone and pass the turn. Tristan draws Rare Candy N. What's that third card? It's a Field, field blower. blower. So he can actually draw one card off of his Oranguru. And yep. he also gets the Parallel City out of play, which really makes no relevance because the Gardevoir already has the damage on it. So either which way, it's just... it's This matchup is literally going to come down to who is able to find the Guzma first. Yep. And he's going to discard that Parallel City. I could see keeping the Parallel City because it means that Kyle can't bench any more Pokemon, either Ferritis Beating or a Lele. 
That's the important because that, that yeah, yeah, that damage doesn't really matter, like you said, because the Gardevoir has been weakened now to where you don't need Choice Band or anything to get that knockout. Yeah. He's going to go with the Strong Charge. This is going to put some energies on that Bulu. But if he can't close the game this turn, that makes it even easier for that Gardevoir to take a knockout. Any more energies that you have resting on your board means Infinite Force is going to be doing more damage. And Tristan, recognizing that, is going to put those energies, kind of spread them out along his Bulus. I think he knows that at any point he's got the Vika Bolt there. He just needs to leave one Grass Energy in the deck. Right. Because whether he draws it or he yep. finds it or he has it in the deck, he has access to it at any point. Um, yeah, Kyle could Guzma and knock out the Vika Bolt, but I don't really see that as the most likely line of play there. So. Right, I agree. Tristan, considering his options with the Strong Charge, he's just pulled the Grass Energy up right now. He might be considering not attaching the Lightning at this point, just pulling the one Grass, and... He's really got to hurry up. If he doesn't commit these turns faster, he's going to run out of time, and he can just lose this match by not being able to close game two in time. I, I, I will say I, I feel pretty confident that between the extra two turns and everything that they should have enough time to be able to actually finish. Mm -hmm. I mean, either one of these players is going to win in their next like couple turns. So yeah. I, I think they're all right. But they're definitely not going to even be able to play like a it's game, a, a for, turn of game of the next game. Tristan draws Choice Band uh, with that Ralts active. Doesn't really do too much. Kyle does play three copies of Field Blower, so it's kind of dangerous putting that down because Kyle still has Puzzle of Time. He can yep. still Max Potion it again on the Guard of War. You're in a weird situation where, yeah, it, it, these micro wishes might not matter, but at the same time, they really could make a difference. Mm -hmm. You'd think the Puzzle of Time, if you get Double Puzzle on Kyle's side, if you, he needs three cards, I believe. No, he needs Guzma double color, so that'll be a, not, a, a win for anyway. So I think you just put down the choice ban, and you see what you can do here. All right, the end is going to put both players back down to a new set of two cards because they both Kyle. have only two prizes left. Yeah, Kyle's got to feel great here with this. His yeah. deck's really, really, really small. He's got two trades, so I mean, he's going to go through over fifty percent of his deck, At least. just including the the two cards the, from the end, the one card from his turn draw, and the four cards from trade. Yep. I, I mean, I think he's literally going to have maybe like two cards left in his deck after he's done at maximum. Let's so see I don't those... see it being very likely for him to miss this final knockout on the top of the Right, we're just looking for Energy Guzma at this point, and that closes the right. game for Kyle. Tristan's turn is certainly going to be Psychic. That's going to knock out the Ralts, and uh, he, he passes, which forces Here's the energy. The retreat. Let's see here. Trade. Trade's the field blower. There's the double puzzle. Man, that double is the puzzle. Game. That's going we're to be see it. the Guzma from the discard pile. He's got the fairy energy already in his hand. If he doesn't have Guzma in the discard, he has Lele. So there's just many. And there players. it is. There's the handshake. Kyle Sable House takes an extremely close game, too. And uh, goes up 2 0 in the match. And that means he's starting off a comfortable 1 0. Absolutely. So definitely something that, I mean, we, we felt pretty confident with the matchup, you know, with the Gardevoir really making it difficult for Tristan to be able to take the wins and everything that he does. Um, but overall, it, it's really down to the wire. I mean, that first game, Tristan didn't have much going for him in anything. But once he was able to get on the floor, I mean, that's what really is shines about that Vika Bolt deck. Once you're set up, there's not much else that you really need in terms of resources. Yeah, the only problem that Tristan really ran into there is having to play around Gardevoir's 230 HP when Kyle is able to get those max potions available and play those max potions and keep his stuff really healthy. You can't knock out a Gardevoir in one hit. And unless you have Choice Band, you're not going to be knocking out a Zorark in one hit with it. So you just kind of do 180 or maybe 210 to a Gardevoir and you don't get those knockouts. So Kyle really expertly playing around the choice band play, using his max potions at the correct time, oftentimes puzzling, getting the max potion out of his discard pile, playing that max potion again. So very good play from both players. Uh, it was a great round one. I super enjoyed it. We're going to take a quick break, guys. We're going to go into round two as soon as we get it going. We'll have some fresh commentators for you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that? And, and I believe we're going to have an interview coming in though in between the round as well. So um, no, we're not going to do an interview after round one. We'll do this maybe towards the top cutter in day two. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll take a quick break, guys, and we'll be right back with you. Stay right here. <laughs> 